Well, it was more of a red ripple than the red wave Republicans had hoped for in the midterm elections, though it wasn't a complete loss for the GOP, which took the House back from Democratic control. But some experts say Republicans learned more about their constituencies than what they gained from them. Joining us now to talk more about the midterm aftermath is Rachel Dean Wilson, head of external affairs for Alliance for Securing Democracy. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, one of the biggest takeaways for Republicans is the signals from voters who widely rejected the more extreme candidates, those of which who denied the legitimacy of the 2020 election. So do you think this is a bit of a reckoning that'll help unify the party or potentially further divide it, given now uh, former President Donald Trump announced he's running for re-election? Thanks for having me on. Uh, we're seeing uh, that play out right now. Uh, so what I took away from the midterm elections, where Democrats eked out control of the Senate and Republicans uh, barely gained the majority in the House, we're still waiting on a few races there. Um, but that candidate or that voters are really looking for um, candidates and parties that can build trust in our election process instead of tearing it down uh, and provide some stability and, and normalcy. I think everyone was in D.C. was pretty shocked uh, by these results, particularly in the House. Uh, and that there's a there are a lot of conversations happening uh, in D.C. and hopefully around the country right now as far as what the path forward is for the Republican Party. So. Yeah, so Democrats held the Senate and did better than expected in the House still. And it seems like many of the successful campaigns focused on appealing to the moderate or independent voters. Would you say that there is a takeaway for the Democrats on that front? Yes, I think it would be a mistake for the Democrats as well to say that this is, you know, really a huge vote of confidence for them uh, either. Uh, one of the things that I was watching really closely was the the. Uh, candidates who denied that Trump won in the, uh, or sorry, that Biden won the 2020 election, um, something that, that Donald Trump has said time and time again, made it sort of a litmus test among the party. And so I was watching election denying candidates to see how they did. Um, and one of the things that I think is most informative is that really across the board candidates, particularly those that would be involved in administering elections on the state level, uh, were rejected by voters if they made election denialism a central theme of their campaign. Uh, so that's that's another piece that we can take away. But I, I don't think Democrats can, can rest easy either. It's a tumultuous time for the country and voters have a lot on their mind. Uh, and I think you see that with this very, very split and divided Congress. So let's talk about this split and divided Congress with the GOP with the House and Democrats with the Senate. How successful do you think this next Congress will be with getting legislation passed? It's going to be tough. It's it's going to be very tough. I, I, even on the uh, House side, uh, if it is Speaker McCarthy, which we, we still have to wait and see, is going to have a tough time getting his conference on board uh, with anything. The Freedom Caucus, um, the more conservative part of uh, the House GOP has already been very vocal uh, that they are they're going to assert themselves uh, in this this slim majority. And so it's going to be hard for him to get uh, the consensus he needs even within his own caucus. So then you turn to what is a, a democratic controlled uh, Senate and you expect those two to work together. I think that's gonna be difficult. Uh, let's hope that it, like the baselines of funding the government, getting the defense authorization bill through those types of, uh, of legislative packages uh, and that funding piece can really make it through. But I would not expect any landmark legislation from this Congress. Yeah, all right, Rachel Dean Wilson from the Alliance for Securing Democracies. Thank you so much for being here on this weekend for us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.